What you see on the table here are a collection of capacitor testers. The ones in the back row represent sort of the early generation, that is the ones suitable for use on vacuum tube equipment, higher voltages, generally more than 50 or 100 volts. Uh, on the left is sort of the Cadillac of the line. Yeah, this is the uh, Sprague Telomic. Sprague, of course, was a major manufacturer of capacitors back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and so on. I think they're still in business, but or they may have been bought by somebody. Uh, the There are some videos on uh, YouTube that you might want to watch on the Sprague Telomic. I'm not going to demonstrate it, but uh, it has a number of features, including uh, in addition to testing capacitors, it can also test inductors and turns ratio of transformers and other such things. At the opposite end of the spectrum is this solar, which if you watch uh, Bob Anderson's uh, B. Anderson TV channel on YouTube, you've uh, undoubtedly seen before. This was is in a little bit different case. It's actually a case I built for it. It came, I bought it from a local uh, uh, radio collector who uh, used it without a case so I built a case for it. The In the middle are the ones that represent some of the uh, various units that were that were available in the uh, uh, say from the late 40s through the, uh, the early 70s. This is a night uh, unit and one of the advantages of these units and Ico also built one like this it has a bridge that will measure the capacity in other words the uh, microfarad rating of the uh, unit but it will also test for uh, leakage and it has a voltage scale that you can set over here that allows you to test leakage and for old tube radios, leakage is probably the most important thing to measure. The capacity generally, if you were within about 20%, it was generally good enough, particularly for electrolytics. Uh, for RF capacitors, these didn't tend to work that well. Uh, in part, uh, now the ones used in the broadcast band generally were okay, but as you started moving up in frequency, you started getting down in the uh, what they in the day called micro microfarads and the problem with that is that uh, the test leads and other factors made it pretty iffy about whether you could get a good reading or not. One of the problems that this tester uh, attempted to solve was the use of an in-circuit test. And this particular tester, the cable that you see on the left there uh, at the bottom, the, the connector, is a special uh, cable. You can't just use any old cable. It has to be a particular length and have a particular capacity per foot. And what this thing did is it basically balanced out the capacity of the cable. And that allowed it to measure, uh, in essence, the capacity in circuit. It was useful, but it wasn't anywhere near a perfect solution. Finally, on the left there is another night. This is a rather simple, uh, basically a go-no-go -no -go tester. It would test for shorts and opens and uh, intermittents. And basically the eye tube that you see there in the top in the middle is the, uh, is the readout. And as you see, the, it shows the eye indicator the, uh, if the eye remains open, then the capacitor is defective. If the eye remains closed, then the capacitor is good. And basically all it did is apply, apply an AC signal to a capacitor. And if the, uh, it passed the AC signal, but not the DC signal, then it was rated as good. So those are sort of the, uh, the first generation of testers. In the front here are some second generation testers and we'll look at those uh, from left to right. 
The first tester on the left is uh, an ESR tester, that is equivalent series resistance. With the advent of transistorized and later integrated circuit equipment operating generally in the range of a few volts up to maybe 25 volts or so, uh, the critical parameter on a capacitor, especially with switching mode supplies and other things operating at fairly high frequencies, became equivalent series resistance. And so this device was developed for that. If you watch Grant's Pass TV, uh, he uses this a lot for TV repair. It's very good for testing surface mount components. In fact, it comes with tweezers that are optimized for uh, surface mount. And for finding bad capacitors on a board, particularly surface mount capacitors, <clears throat> it really can't be beat. It's a very, very nice uh, instrument. Next to it is a DCA meter. This is the, the DCA ESR meter. It's basically the equivalent of the unit you saw on the left. It measures equivalent series resistance of capacitors. Once again, it also worked quite well, and it will work in circuit. It uses uh, alligator clips instead of uh, the... Uh, SMD or tweezers of that one, but otherwise it's basically the same. It's a little a little harder to use in circuit because you have to manipulate two alligator or or uh, two uh, clips like that. Uh, but other than that, it works pretty well. Next to it is another device made by Atlas, and this is actually an LCR meter. That is, it measures inductance, capacitance, and resistance. It's very useful once again, uh, particularly if you want to know the value of smaller capacitors. Uh, it will go down fairly low and, and does to some extent make up for the, the uh, units, the first generation units that wouldn't tend to read small capacitors very well. But it, once again, it has limitations like all the others, but basically a good unit. Over here is a, is a multimeter, which also includes a capacitance uh, section right there, you see it. It measures the capacity and works very much like the capacitance section of this LCR meter. In other words, it does not measure leakage or ESR, it just measures the capacity. But that can often be useful, particularly where you're sorting capacitors uh, based on value and in, especially the smaller capacitors these days are very, very difficult to read. You have to decode them and so on. Next to it is a straight capacitance meter. This is a unit that just reads capacitance. One of the advantages of this meter is it goes fairly low in capacitance, but it also goes quite high. And that can be useful, particularly if you're doing audio circuits where they use sometimes capacitors of 5,000, 10,000, and I've even seen 20,000 microfarad capacitors. There are some, some large commercial systems that use capacitors that approach a farad in capacity. This won't go quite that high, but it will go high enough to measure most of the audio capacitors that are used in output stages and things like that. Next to that is another LCR meter that uses the basic same circuit as the Atlas. Uh, this one is not an automatic ranging, however, so you have to select the range. And finally, on the left is a little leakage tester that I built. If you watch the SX62 videos that I put on YouTube, uh, the Halicrafters SX62A restoration, I built this in the hope that I could use it to test the capacitors in old radios. It was a unit that was originally designed for TV service uh, shops to test capacitors for leakage in things like sink stages and so on. 
Works very well for that, but I'm afraid it didn't work very well in the SX62A restoration. If you saw that video, uh, you'll know. Basically, as is, this unit will test capacitors for leakage at about 120 volts and about 240 volts. If you put a step-up transformer on the input, it doubles that, so it will test at uh, 220 and at 440. Generally, you'll find that if you can test up to 450 volts on old capacitors, that's good enough. Now you might say, well, look, I don't need all this stuff because I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna replace all the capacitors in old radios. And when it comes to modern stuff, TVs and so on, if something doesn't work, I'll just shotgun it. Well, that may be uh, the right approach. And in fact, it's very similar to the way I do it. However, the question you always have to ask yourself is, how do you know the capacitor you're putting in is any good, or the right value, or leaky, or has high, high ESR? So uh, at the uh, last of this video, I'm going to show you a yet further capacitor tester made by Sencor. And I'm actually going to test a couple of capacitors. That tester, that uh, uh, it's called the LC102, does pretty much everything that these, these testers do. In other words, you can use it for legacy capacitors in old TVs and radios. You can use it for modern capacitors, and it even does a few extra things. So let's take a look at that and then wrap up this video. This is the Sencor LC102 Capacitance Inductance Analyzer. I don't use it for inductance that much. Uh, it, I have not found it to be as useful in that area, although it does a good job of bringing out uh, transformers and uh, uh, coils that are used in switching mode power supplies and things like that where you are concerned about shorted turns. But I'm not going to get into that. That's a rather specialized area that uh, if you uh, if you're familiar with some of Sencor's old equipment, you know they started this technique of using what they called a ringer. It applies a pulse to the inductor and then measures the number of cycles uh, that, it, uh, that it rings over a period of time. It's good for that, but except for that I don't tend to use this for inductors. But it is very good as a capacitor tester. Over on the left you'll see the, uh, the various modes or the various types of capacitors it will test. And like in all my other videos, I don't have any connection to Sencor. This is a pretty old piece of equipment anyway. I don't even think they still sell it. But uh, you notice it, it will do aluminum electrolytics. It'll do double layer. It will do tantalum caps. And you do have to test these a little differently. The reason is this actually has a microprocessor in it with stored details about the characteristics of these various capacitors. So it actually tests the capacitor based on uh, a regimen that uh, is very close to that used by the manufacturers for these. Then, of course, the next row down, ceramic caps, then all other caps, sort of a catch-all and then a spare that never got used. Down at the bottom uh, in blue are the uh, three different kinds of uh, coils, silks, and flybacks, and switching transformers. Like I say, I use it for switching transformers a little bit for ringing them out to make sure they have no shorted turns. The display at the top is where you read uh, all of the results. Over on the left is the voltage meter and the way that you set this up is you first set the value of the capacitor using the push buttons. Then on the right you see four orange buttons and two blue buttons. The four orange buttons are for capacitor value, capacitor leakage, dielectric absorption, and capacitor ESR. Now three of those, that is value, leakage, and ESR, you can do with some of the testers I showed you earlier. But dielectric absorption is something that is unique to this tester, and it can be very useful if you're testing capacitors that are used in uh, circuits like sample and hold, where uh, what you want is a capacitor that charges up to a value, holds that value for as long as possible, 
and then when it discharges it really goes away. So let's test a capacitor. This is a 0.1 microfarad 630 volt capacitor. We're going to test it at 500 volts. So we enter 500 volts and you will notice up here the voltage and then over here we will enter the capacitance as 0.1 microfarad and now we will read the capacitor value and I hope you can read that it's 0 0.1004 microfarad and three four now we will test the leakage and we'll press the capacitor leakage key right here and once again the readout will be on the display in the center and as you see it's uh, 0 0.01 microamps which means it's very very little leakage at 500 volts. This capacitor tester will actually go up to about a thousand volts. So I hope that this gives you an idea of the range. Now this particular tester as I say is a little bit uh, old. I think it was made in the 80s. There was a successor to this, the LC103, that I think was made uh, beginning in the 90s, maybe the mid, mid to late 90s, into the early 2000s, but I think they've all been discontinued now. At any rate, the, uh, the nice thing about this is it really is a reasonably good tester. Uh, in other words, it's not a lab instrument. It's primarily intended for people who service equipment that has a wide variety of capacitor types and it can be outfitted to uh, for automated testing and other things that I haven't shown you so it is often used in production environments to for example pre-screen capacitors before they're put on boards and so on. So I hope this has been useful to you if you're going to work on tube equipment you do need to have a, a tester that will do capacitor leakage. If you're going to be working on uh, non-tube equipment or maybe I should say lower voltage equipment particularly transistor and IC equipment you need one that will do ESR. Of course it's also a good idea to have something that will read capacitor value unless you're doing uh, equipment that needs uh, rapid recovery uh, on its capacitors and uh, me, uh, metrology uses and so on. You don't really need the dielectric absorption feature. But the nice thing about this one is it does all three. So uh, I hope that will be useful to you and I hope you'll uh, find something that suits your needs for testing capacitors. Have a nice day. See you later.